<laughs> okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you. I think you mean to say this is, it's definitively mine, okay? This is definitive edition, all it's right? Definitively yours, yes. Definitively Izzy. mine, thank you. So we had a bid war between OG or classic or 2002 or 2003, if you're talking about the PC mm -hmm. version. Um, we had a bid war between that game and this new release, I believe this was late 2021, that, uh, that came out. A bit of a controversial release. Perhaps we will touch on that during the, uh, the run proper, but um, no surprise to me, although keeping an eye on the bid war throughout the week uh, to this point, it was pretty dead even, but we had a cool thousand dollars drop from one donator that really put this over the edge proper. So we're going to be definitively going through the definitive edition. Uh, a couple things worth noting. Uh, I will be playing on 30 FPS because it's 2022 and you play at 30 FPS. And uh, because there are some things that are going to be a little more easily done or possible, uh, no music, sadly. And uh, other than that, I think the most interesting thing to say about this before we get started here is that this run is totally different, man. Well, it's about 60% different. The first 20 minutes are much more or less the same. The back end is going to be totally different than what you've expected. I also have a controller. I'll be using this for 10 seconds during the run. So be ready for that. Uh, if we're ready on time, I'm ready to get started. So I'll give you a countdown starting from three. Let's go. Three, two, one, go. Thank you, thank you. Definitive edition, man. It's real. It's Everybody's here. made out of wax figurines in this one. We got some nice lighting, though. This game is based on, I believe the renderer is UE4, but under the hood, it is largely the same game, and that was an intentional, you know, uh, design feature. They're like, well, there's, there's clearly something special about old school GTA that we want to make sure we preserve a good amount of that. Hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Making friends with the taxi already, man. One other amazing definitive feature that I'm actually a big fan of because I'm lazy, dude, is that you just, like, never fall off the bike anymore. You can just hit things head on. And an OG where you would probably go soaring for miles, you're just going to be glued to the seat. It yeah, is we, awesome. We, we got a sticky Tommy. It's with the, <laughs> yeah. the sticky hands. I'm a big fan of that. Um, this is our main antagonist here. This is Sonny Forelli. He is our... He is our, 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 our boss man. You know, we are a mafioso, Tommy Versetti, voiced by Ray Liotta, who yeah, rest we miss in, very dearly. Rest in peace, Ray Liotta. We miss very dearly. Um, anyway, so Sonny sends you down south to conduct some business, expand uh, the, uh, the mafia holdings from Liberty City down to Miami or Vice City as you would call it, clearly inspired by Miami, of course. I thought Miami existed separately. It does exist separately, but I'm not going to get into really... <laughs> I'm not going to... You know, I'm not here to... All right. Anyway, so the first thing we're going to do is the, uh, the, the drugs deal that we were sent down to do has gone horribly, horribly wrong. So we're going to get on our moped, and we're going to solve this crime. Who took our money? Who took our products? And how about we look nice while we're doing it? Let's get a nice pastel outfit going on here. Let's get a nice Harley going on here as well. Thank you for the kind donation, man. We're all about donations. Yeah, here. no, that generous bike donation right there. There's going to be a lot of vehicular donations throughout, throughout the run. Anyway, you can just smash in whatever you want. I'm never falling <laughs> off, dude. If I fall off, it's going to be something else. Um, PMC famously has issues getting this bike to spawn here. I never do. I don't know what you're doing wrong, man. I mean, look, I'm, I'm sure if you keep you keep saying stuff, things will only get better. Yeah, for you. I know. If I if I keep talking trash, I'm sure I'm <laughs> gonna get just completely slaughtered. But here we are at the uh, the Colonel's boat party, where a lot of Vice City's key crime players are at. Uh, we skip the party because we're too cool to be to be seen there for very long, um, and we're gonna just drive the daughter off to the. Uh, uh, the nightclub, she wants to get away too, you know, she's too cool to be seen there. We're just going to slide a bit. That man was sitting on the sidewalk <laughs> at the uh, intersection, which I, I think might be a traffic violation. Uh, so we drop her off, and that's mission passed. All right. The first one's always the hardest one, as I like to say. 
So the second one is coming up here. We're just going to go right back to the lawyers. The lawyer is going to be our only, our only uh, mission outlet for the first four or so. But uh, going back to maybe some of the differences between OG and Definitive, some of you might have seen some of the OG uh, GDQ runs that I have been fortunate enough to do uh, throughout my years here, is that one of the key features is the replay system, where you can basically take a snapshot of the game, of Tommy standing somewhere, maybe, for example, on a rampage icon. That's my OG, wow. that's my OG muscle memory. In OG, <laughs> you would have fallen off six times, so I'm like, let me just jump off so that I prevent that, but I probably could have stayed on. Um, but going back to what I was saying, the replay system is not accessible to us in this version, so we can't time travel, we can't jump across the map, we can't interact with things that we aren't actually around for, we can't break the game by picking up rampages while picking up missions or starting vehicular side missions. We can't do any of that stuff. And it's a little unfortunate because it adds a lot of utility to the run. But nonetheless, um, we still find ways to break the game. Don't worry. Don't, don't worry. This is our first friend we're going to make. Unfortunately, mm. unfortunately, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, here's Chef Gang. Chef Gang is going to come after us. We're, we're exhausted like we actually beat them up. There's Chef Gang. You know, they're a little mad. Uh, there's, a, there's a pool of tomato sauce that we just had to step through. <laughs> um, you know. Some loose juice. Loose juice. Just step over it, please. Uh, so this is Lance with the big arrow over his head. That's me backing his car into the building. <laughs> it's the first thing I do when I'm entrusted with someone else's vehicle is, is consider the amount of damage I can do before they get angry. So this is Lance. You can see his face there. Yeah, he's really excited to be here. Yeah, He doesn't blink, dude. He's a wax figurine, I'll tell you. They pulled him out of a wax museum. Uh, if you're sensitive to fast moving camera angles, whenever I'm in a car, I'm going to be doing this every now and again just to keep the road clear of any traffic. I spaz out the camera, and everyone on the road thinks, we got to stay away from that guy. Yeah. You can't skip this cutscene. You can skip this in OG. You can't skip it here. We got the spinning armor up there. That's a feature. That's a feature. They, they could have they patched it. Draws it draws the eye. I would buy that armor times, first. Man. You would buy that armor first? Uh, yeah, yeah, it does it's draw spinning. the eye. I mean, you know, and take floating. a pick here. Anything you want. Um, so we're just going to sit here and be told, this is where you buy guns, and then we're never going to buy guns. Um, <laughs> wow. Sorry, sir. You know, wrong time, wrong place. Let me tell you, man. It's a cold city. So anyway, driving back to the hotel, that's just your very standard tutorial mission. Here's a car. Drive here. Drive here. By the way, this is where your first safe house is. This is where you save the game. I'm going to take this car right here. Perfect. Perfect. I was able to make it to the hotel fast enough that uh, the cutscene outside the hotel and inside the hotel both did not play. So... When, uh, when Lance dropped me off there, I was able to uh, gain movement again and gain this uh, person's vehicle and also do a, little, do a little mayhem in the process. You know, there's going to be a lot of uh, there's going to be a lot of that here. Yeah, just a little bit razor freestyle scooter. I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is how I hold my phone. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> New phone. Uh, who dis? That's how I hold my Bluetooth speaker. Yeah. Right there. Um, so. <clears throat> we have to take some phone calls in this game to progress the story. This is the first one. This is uh, the phone we got from the chef when we, uh, when we, you know, made him meet his mortal end. Uh, and uh, we just took his phone, and this is a person being like, hey, you're not Leo, because obviously not. Um, this is the mission that we would usually skip in OG. Seen for the first time in GDQ since I don't know when <laughs> is Jury Fury. Usually we would do a trick. This is tragic, by the way. That's just really... The game wants us to take that hammer, but we have guns, so why do you need a hammer, dude? I don't know what you're, what you're thinking, game, but nonetheless, um, Jury Fury, so we actually have to play this honestly for the first time in many years. Uh, another caveat of this mission, and of a few missions that you're going to see throughout the run, is that they are just slightly different from the Vice City that you've probably come to know and love, um, unless you've played Vice City on mobile as uh, I think some of the changes made here in this game started with the mobile versions that came out many, many years beforehand. Um, I need to aim my pistol there. So one of the changes here is that this vehicle has a lot less health needed uh, to, uh, to actually scare the juror. We're doing just a little bit of, um, you know, juror intimidation here. And a little bit of stunts, dude. 
Yeah. We're never falling off the bike, man. <laughs> it would take Tommy 19 years to finally get acclimated to riding a, a bike, I guess, and learn how to do cool things without falling off, but here we are. You figure he had to get better at it at some point, right? I know, it's, you know, it's so many times where I've just gone over a tiny bump and Tommy flies, and I'm like, dude, come on. We, I thought we were We've friends. gone over this. Yeah, we've gone over this. So anyway, here's the uh, the second juror we need to intimidate. Again, we just need to fire a few bullets into his vehicle. He's, um, you know, he's trying to make friends, but we're trying to make enemies, I guess. <laughs> so we scare him off, and he just, this is a good noise. This is a good scream noise, you know. Give that VA a bonus. That's a good one. So that's the mission passed. If you've been keeping score at home, that's three lawyer missions done. We're on to the fourth one. And that'll be the last one out of this uh, quest giver, mission, mission man, whoever. Mission chain. Mission chain, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the uh, cutscene where we meet Avery Carrington, voiced by Burt Reynolds, who we also miss very, very dearly. Um, and we'll actually be seeing him again later. If this was OG, we would never see him again later. But this is definitive, and we do things entirely differently here. So. Another, um, another definitive change, maybe another mobile change. Uh, you're supposed to blow up all these vans, and you can do that with that barrel and that barrel that I just blew up. Uh, normally, you'd have to go in, start a riot, um, get the security to open up the gate, then you go in, you, you shoot them or do whatever you'd like to do, but made, frankly, quite trivial. Yeah, man. Mm, sick. Unbelievable, dude. Oh. What a great landing. Swag all over the place. So... Nonetheless, um, we're going now to our next mission giver, who we've already met, uh, the Colonel, Colonel Cortez here. He lives on the pier. He's probably never been on land in many, many years. At least I've never seen him on land in many, many years. We're going to take another phone call and fall in the bushes immediately. Have you ever answered a phone call like that? <laughs> Answer my phone and trip. Yeah, yeah. then just jump off like I know. a 10-foot cliff. Speaking of phone, where is it? You yeah. see it? I don't see it. Ghost phone. Hand phone. Talk to the ground. Talk to the ground. <laughs> yeah, so there's a spike again. This is just the colonel calling us and being like, hey, I sympathize with you. I want to help you out because I know what it's like when things go brad, when, brad, when things go bad. <laughs> so we've got our new contact point here. And I believe we go this way. I've had to practice both games throughout the week. And so things are slightly different. I got to make sure mm -hmm. that I'm playing the right route on the right game. And uh, so now we're going to do a little bit of grunt work for Colonel Cortez. You know, fair enough. He wants us to go and take care of somebody who he thinks is some manner of informant. Um, so that's all fine and dandy. I'm just going to drive my bike all the way across the city up north to, uh, to meet this guy. And in the meantime, I think we can get some donations in. All right. We have a $50.50 donation from Karagura. My first ever GDQ donation goes to KZ Fru, the only streamer I've considered a friend. Oh, You've man. truly made a profound impact on the lives of so many people, me included. Thank you for all you've done, and best of luck in all you have yet to do. Love you, man. Thank you very much, Kuragura. Um, very, um, you know, very good guy. Has always been very, very supportive and very pleased to... Um, uh, hear from him today. I need to. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm. I'm. You've. You've rotted my brain with sentimentality. I'm supposed to be a a, a a a conniving thief and criminal, and instead I'm just like being savvy. Just want to so, sit, sit down for the full side. <laughs> so anyway, we we've we've done the job, and now it's time to uh, escape the police here. And uh, by way of doing that, we're supposed to go to the pay and spray, and uh, that gets rid of all your one to level. You park your car in, or your bike in this case. We fell, wow. dude. Unbelievable. How much is that? That's got to go. How about you just keep grinding your, your <laughs> sports car against the yeah, wall, Clap bro. for that. Clap for, that's really hard to do, to fall off it your is bike. It's actually in quite edition. difficult. <laughs> it's probably the hardest thing I'll do in the run. Almost happened again. But uh, regardless of that, um, we did the job, and we're supposed to learn about the paint. Oof, come on, man. Really? Uh, we're supposed to learn about the pain spray, but there are uh, some things you can pick up called police bribes, and they limit your, or they decrease your one level by one, and I'm taking it very slow here. Are you sure? I, you could, I mean, you could really go faster ball. there. No, I, I don't. I almost hit my own bike again, dude. So anyway, uh, the next one, I'm going to do some more work for the colonel here, and somebody's ringing my phone. I really don't care. Um, 
leave me alone. I'm speed running, man. Come on. What about your vehicle's warranty? Yeah, I know, really. So anyway, the next, uh, the next thing we're supposed to do is uh, a little bit of a chase across town, a bike chase across town. You know, it sounds cool, right? We want that in our game. But, you know, we can actually, um, we can actually do what we're meant to do way before the, uh, the guy we're chasing gets on his bike, and I hope I can land it in the, the sickest manner possible. Um, we're going to find out here, but I'm going to park my bike right around here. We're going to meet this gentleman, and he has a thing that we'd like. So we're going to skip that and hopefully catch him here with, uh, with our blade. We have a chainsaw, by the way. I don't know if I've told you guys. We were given that, we were given that a while ago. Um, look at that, man! Yeah! I told you, dude. <laughs> You're not going to fall off the bike, except for the time that I just did. Except for the time you went into yeah. the water? So we're taking shh, taking this very, very slowly. Good. Good, 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 good. I don't make the same mistake twice. I just make different mistakes over and over again, which is which makes it more interesting, I think. But regardless of that, all right, so mall shootout done. We're going on to uh, Guardian Angels, where we... Uh, we guardian angel a, a deal between um, Diaz, who is going to be the next major player that we meet, and uh, and a local gang. So we have to go to the car park to pick up a uh, a weapon left by the colonel, and then we're going to go into the alleyway. And it's a bit of an auto scroller for the most part. Uh, but first we have to get there, do some six slides. All right. There we go. Inexplicably, uh, Lance is going to show up here. Uh, he, he, you know, must be following us or something. I don't know what he's what he's up to. Hogging all the action, I we're think. hogging all the action because we're the protagonist. Like that's what you do, you know. So we're going to do uh, some more sick stunts here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Easiest way to get out. That's how I do it. Yeah, no, that's that's the only way to leave. Yep, absolutely. So. Uh, we're heading up here uh, to the uh, to the meet. Just gonna slide right in. All right, awesome. Um, did I inter introduce you? No. Did you introduce yourself? No, I just sort of I just been sitting here, you know, back you firing off quips. Hi, I'm Casey Fru, and we're 15 <laughs> minutes in the definitive edition. I am joined by TMC Trilogy. All right, thank you. I like to keep people in suspense, yeah, you know? No. I mean, I figured you wouldn't introduce me here because this is my favorite mission in the game. It is? No, this is my least favorite. All right, man. <laughs> A man of his word, as you can see, Mr. PMC Trilogy. My favorite fact about PMC Trilogy is he has the world record for the Sopranos Road to Respect. Congratulations. Thank you. You know? We really shouldn't clap for that, but... I got to hold it for New Jersey. <laughs> That's right. So um, this goes horribly wrong. That's Diaz, by the way. He's the uh, yeah, he's the man of short stature here, and uh, they're just going to pull up and they're going to slam their vehicles into the backs of things, which is they're a little more gentle in OG. I don't know how they managed to make everything just more violent in this game. Uh, speaking of more violence, I just uh, I need I need their weaponry. It's going to be better in my hands. You'll notice that there's a little bit of uh, an outline on these fellows here. Plants need some help. That's nice, I guess. Um, just gonna grab some uh, some armaments here and contribute to the fight against cars. Yeah. There Tommy we go. Tommy Rossetti, welcome to the war on cars. There we go. All right. And this is the uh, the last two that are gonna show up here. And yeah, we're just chilling, you know, doing our thing. Uh, normally, there's a trick that you could do in OG at this point where you could get movement in this cutscene, but we have to do that by way of replay, which we... Who's leaving the tomato juice everywhere, dog? Um, anyway, so I'm gonna have to do a bit of an aim check here. Let's get this guy. We got nice, him, dude. Nice. Sniped. Sniped. All right. Yeah, in OG, you're able to uh, stop him in the cutscene, but here we have to play a little more honestly, at least for the first 20 minutes or so. So this is uh, Diaz. Uh, he's going to be impressed with our work, and he's going to want us to, uh, to, to join his... I don't know. He wants, he, wants to, he wants us to do things for him. Um, surely uh, above board things, you know. Help Tommy, dude, definitively get on the bike, please. <laughs> All right. Anyway. 
So we're going to take our bike and we're going to go to Diaz. Uh, his island is locked right now. You're not really supposed to be able to get there, but I think if we uh, just wedge ourselves in, in some places yeah. here... Uh, you just we'll... knock very loudly. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just, uh, you know, you could also warp right across. Yep. That also works. So there you go. We're at Diaz's mansion before Diaz even wants us here. So he's on the phone right now. He's talking nice about his colleagues. Very nice things. Great about, work uh, environment. <laughs> really good work environment. <laughs> he's going to be watching. Look, he's watching the run. Watch. Hold on. Yep. He's watching the run. Yeah, man. no, he's definitely watching GDP Heights. right there. <laughs> he's like, I'm on the screen. Yeah. All right. So anyway, uh, we're going to take his car because that's the price you pay. He's donated. He's donated his vehicle. Um, and we're just going to go to uh, to this fellow that he wants us to track down. This mission's called The Chase. Uh, as I drive to his place, I believe we can get uh, something red in here. All right. We have $5 from Redrias. Been watching HEDQ for the last 10 years, and it has been a blast in no small part thanks to the always entertaining and incredibly welcoming KZ Frew. I might always have been more of a lurker in the KZ crew, but I always felt like I was a part of this uh, of an amazing community. Looking forward to whatever is next. Heart. Thank you very much, Rodriguez. Um, much appreciated, as always. Uh, here we go. We're supposed to chase him across the rooftops. We're not going to do that. We're, we're going we're gonna to have some issues getting down to street ground level here. Please, Tommy, please, please jump it, over. It's been 20 years. Get down the stairs. Please, it's harder. Man. Let's go. Get in the car. All right. Hurry up. Clock's ticking, man. Literally. All right. So we're supposed to chase him across the rooftop. And if this was OG, we would do that because we can sprint as long as we want. But here we can't because it's definitive and you have a defin definite amount of sprint power. So instead, we're going to trigger the uh, the rooftop to progress here, and we're going to run over to his friend's um, suddenly here buggy, and we're going to jack his friend. He's going to be stunned. He's going to stand up in his seat and look at us like we're crazy. And uh, we're just going to have him slide on in. And now we're going to nice. drive him to his hideout instead of chase him to his hideout. How do you feel about that, sir? You can barely see him over there. That's one thing I, okay, literally one thing I don't like about Definitive, the faces are not as good. You can barely see the face here. In OG, you can see a lot more face. And I love looking at the face because it's funny. It's a good gag, but you can barely see it here. And it's just. I mean, he'd probably be happier if he weren't constantly sticking the gun in his face. We're but. just hitting, these poles are cement, man. So anyway, um, so there you go. Instead of a chase, it was more of a, a ride share. And uh, mission passed. So we're going to drive back to, uh, to Colonel Cortez's. In OG, we would actually go to the next island and take a helicopter. I don't, <laughs> don't know, man. We're top heavy, all right? It's the big brain. Um, nonetheless, it is actually faster and definitive to drive back to the mansion, which is a bit of a drive. So while we're driving, I think we can listen to some more by Musical Daredevil. All right. We have $25 from Cubo. KZ Fru couldn't possibly fall in the water during his GDQ speedrun of the definitive editions, could he? What do you think? Has it happened yet? Stay tuned. Maybe it will happen. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> we have $50 from Bard621. I was going to put this bid towards Definitive Edition for Vice City, but since it's already in the lead, let's put this money towards the bonus game, because more games is always awesome. I agree. And checking in on that bonus game, we have raised $42,000 out of $90,000, so that is about halfway there. Now, we only have a few more runs left before we need to get that incentive met, so make sure you get your donations in for the bonus game if you want to see that incentive added to the run, or added to the marathon. PMC, what do you leave in your hedge maze? Uh, usually uh, C4. Uh, <laughs> Not a sniper? Some Claymore mines, maybe. Okay. But... Well, I had to grab a sniper from Diaz's hedge maze uh, while we're on the phone here. Uh, and this is actually sincerely going to be the last major story mission we do for quite some time. That is more definitive goodness here. Phnom Penh. And we're working with Lance again. So what we're going to do now, after we have uh, basically driven our, our good gang fellow to his 
gang house. Uh, we're gonna do the only sensible thing. We're gonna get a giant big gun and a helicopter, and we're gonna rain on his parade with bullets. With bullets, yeah, yeah. exactly. Shouts to bullets. We're just gonna throw them out of the helicopter. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, we've got a bit of a conversation going on here, and we've got some uh, some boats and stuff that, you know, the game's just kind of elbowing you a bit, like, hey, you can you can shoot. You them. can just let loose. See see those you right there. You can finally put shoot. it in the golf. They're smoking right now. I don't know why they're smoking, but um, you know we want to conserve our ammo. We want to we want to stay primed and ready for for knocking out all these dudes on these rooftops here. It's actually like kind of a whole compound that we're going to be infiltrating here, and I guess they're ready for us because they're just hanging out on the roof with guns. So here they go. Uh, this mission is made very very easy in. OG, because we can actually break out of the first person mode and fire this gun at a much higher rate of fire. But we don't have such tech here in uh, Definitive Edition. We, again, we're gonna have to play a little honestly, and we're gonna have to fight against the camera a bit too, because as the helicopter rotates, my camera rotates with it, and that makes things a bit hard to be really precise with. But I know where all these dudes are. There's one back there. He's cheeky. He's hiding behind the gazebo of sorts. Got two playing tennis. Got two playing tennis. That's right. You know, there we go. Eventually, eventually we're going to get there. Uh, that guy, this one right here, he's kind of hard to hit because he can be out of range, actually, based on where, you're, where you are in your helicopter uh, flying pattern here. So this is going to be the last uh, few. We've got some on the balcony here. You can see me fighting the camera here as it rotates with the helicopter. If I get these three dudes, it's incredible. I got one. Yeah, one out That's of one third incredible. All right. So, again, getting those three guys much easier in OG, but since it took me a bit of time to actually make sure that those guys, you know, fell asleep or whatever, it's going to take a while for us to actually get on the ground here. That fade does not exist in OG. I don't know why they added one there. Um... So we're just going to run through and take the briefcase. I guess it's full of cash, probably. Whatever. Um, they tried to stop me, but, you know, we're Tommy Versetti. Too we, fast for bullets. We just, we're the T2000, man. Yeah. <laughs> Judgment day. <laughs> <laughs> you can only delay it. You can't stop it. Exactly. So that's the last story mission. So now this is where we deviate from OG in a real major way, and we do things that you really don't have to do it all. I'm loading the autosave, um, and I'm not starting the next mission here. If I do that, that's really embarrassing, yeah, and it's, it, it's uh, a huge waste of time, and I'm not doing that. So that's the last job we do for Diaz. Uh, instead, we're going to go to Avery now. Actually, we're going to crash into the wall. <laughs> now we're going to go to Avery. All right. Avery, again, played by, uh, you know, the man Burt Reynolds. Uh, he is kind of a... Kind of a like, real estate baron of sorts that engages in really hostile tactics to, you know, uh, embolden his business. Again, I really don't care about the phone right now. I just want to go to the golf course, frankly, mm -hmm. four iron here. Bro, you're doing business deals. What are you, what are you doing? Yeah. So we're going to park ourselves on the hide, son. Come in and park yourself on the hide. Whatever that means, the hide. <laughs> I guess it's leather, leather, yeah. Yeah, sure. it's leather, leather all hide, right. yeah. So, all right. So he's going to want us to take out a guy on the golf course, which means usually we'd go into the golf course, lose all our weapons at the metal detector, because when a guy walks into your golf course metal detector with an entire armament in his pockets, you probably don't want him to have those uh, on your business grounds. Um, I can't skip this cutscene. Listen very closely. I appreciate that you looked at me for that whole cutscene. <laughs> I don't know. I, I was too full of shame. I couldn't look at the screen. <laughs> All right. So anyway, there you go. Q-tap. Nice. Yep. Uh, this is where we would normally walk in. But actually, uh, this is why we got the sniper earlier, as I'm going to equip it using the weapon wheel. And if you look very closely, as a man, you're playing golf. And that's what happens when you play golf. And OG, you can't see him. You just have to set it up and yeah. hope it works, but... Thank you. <laughs> that was definitive. 
Yeah, um, since the draw distance is higher, you can see him from that position. But in OG, you have to line up a, kind of a pixel or two pixel perfect shot. Uh, so it is made a bit easier. Now, everybody's favorite mission that everybody, uh, sometimes people come to my chat and ask, when is he going to do the RC helicopter mission? And I have to break their heart and say, you actually don't have to do that mission. And then they tell me, you're telling me I wasted months of my childhood trying to do something that I didn't have to do. And I say, don't shoot the messenger, man. It's not my fault. Um, so anyway, Demolition Man infamously, uh, one of the, apparently regarded by many to be one of the most difficult missions, frankly made more difficult by the changes they made to uh, definitives, <laughs> the changes they made to the game's control scheme. Uh, so I'll try and uh, regale a little bit of what I'm doing here. First things first, uh, you left click to ascend and you right click to descend, <laughs> which I'm not a fan of. Uh, and then uh, you just tilt forward here with W. I'm just going to be clicking a bit. Drop bomb is Q, I guess. Yeah, I sure. I thought I changed that to R. Usually I like I like to drop bombs with, with uh, you know, another key. Is but that because you're, you're a pirate? Yeah, right? All right. So nonetheless, there we go. So we're just going to uh, plant a few bombs here. And honestly, I, I should make, uh, you know, this mission should go very, very smoothly. Sincerely, no problems at all. <laughs> um, don't, why are you laughing? I'm, you, look, I'm just, it's going to be great. It's going to be fine. <laughs> so while I'm, you know, committing um, demolition, man. Man. Uh, why don't we get hear some more from Mr. Musical Daredevil? Yeah, I didn't like this mission either when I was playing it. This was, was very challenging. We have $25 from Noise Tank Nick. First definitive gift of the marathon to celebrate KZ Fru definitively demolishing this definitive version of a definite classic. We have $100 from Roman Numera 13. Hey all, wearing my Hawaiian shirt for the Vice City run to feel the vibes. Let's see those sick tricks. Let's get that Five Nights at Freddy's incentive. Woo! And checking in on that incentive, we are almost to that halfway point. We are just at $44,000 out of $90,000. let us get that bonus run added to the marathon. We, we, have, we have $500 from DFB210. <laughs> I'm a simple man. I see Casey for running at GDQ. I donate. Right on. Thank you very much for the 500 I we appreciate it. We have $20 from Rockcoin. Hello from Germany. Loving the event so far. I almost fell asleep, but nothing stops me from watching this Vice City Definitive Edition speedrun. Big love for KZ and the whole GTA speedrun community. Show us those definitive strats. The one thing that really is a little different than maybe uh, a casual player would do here is I go to the, uh, the top floor for the third bomb, and then I go to the third floor for the last one. It just works out to be a little bit faster that way. Um, so we're on the last one here. It's been, it's been smooth. It's been, we've been cruising. We've just been vibing. Yeah. Um, nothing, nothing too fancy here. So it's about to wrap this one. This might be the longest mission, yeah, I think. Yeah, I, I think that's definitively true. Thank you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, nonetheless, we're just about done here, and we're going to actually be doing the last mission of the Avery Chain. And the reason I didn't do this, uh, these missions earlier is because we actually didn't have all of Avery's missions unlocked. We needed to finish the mission in the helicopter, the big one. Um, we need to do that one to unlock his final mission, as that takes place on the other island. And finishing Phnom Penh is what unlocks the whole of Ice City. The, the world is truly our oyster. Uh, now, so mission passed. You get a thousand dollars for all of that. Now I'm going to answer my phone. So um, that's the colonel calling us again. We're not going to do anything with his uh, with his mission. He's just we've just unlocked another Colonel Cortez mission, but we won't be seeing the good colonel again. Mm, sir, no, sir. No, and but we did have to answer that phone ball, phone ball, <laughs> phone call. We had to answer that because. Um, we just have to, the, the phone calls are basically on a priority chain. There's D Donald Love um, of GTA 3 and Liberty City Stories fame. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So phone calls just kind of are on the same priority chain. So if we want a phone call 
that's lower in the chain, we have to take everything higher up in the chain first. So nonetheless, even though we're not going to do anything with the colonel's mission, we still have to listen to his phone call. Um, this is 2-bit hit. This is where we get into the, uh, the gang war missions as, uh, as good old Avery has decided that a gang war is good for business, actually. It lowers property value, and, and he's, you know, the real estate baron, so that's his stick. So in order to uh, kind of propagate this, we're going to dress up as one gang member and commit, to, commit an act of atrocity against the other, as you do. Um, again, more missions you're not going to see in, in a standard any percent of OG. Any percent no SSU, that is. The, the standard just get to the end of the game. Uh, these are all side missions. I want to stress that. Why am I doing side missions, dog? Um, you'll find out. So, nonetheless, here we are. We're going to stand on our car. We're going to take these guys out. That guy over with the arrow, you know, he's the target for what I, I don't know, for whatever reason. Ye nice. I mean, that was interesting. <laughs> not a lot of, not a lot happened. It was a lot of noise. It was a lot of grinding. Um, so anyway, we're just supposed to leave the zone, and we do. Um, it's faster to go north, but actually we want to go south, because that's where we're going next. We've been in helicopters. We've been in cars. We've been in bikes. Now we're going to go on a boat. Besides the Colonel's yacht, I suppose. We're going to actually drive a boat. So I'm going to grab some armor. As I'm waiting for a phone call to come in, it takes 20 seconds from when you pass a mission for the phone call to come in. Tommy puts in his Bluetooth earpiece, hands-free baby. That's right. And um, we're just going to go over to Umberto's Cafe. So the two gangs that are at war right now, thanks to us, great contribution, yep. is uh, Auntie Poulet's gang and then Umberto's gang. Umberto is voiced by, do you know? Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo, thank you. Thank you, thank you. There he is, the man right there. See? See. All right. So we are on the scene now. <laughs> so this is Rico. We uh, should be able to skip this in OG, but we can't do it here. Just another strange inconsistency, but it's fine. It's fine. It's a fun game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's no problem. So uh, to prove our worthiness to Umberto, to Danny Trejo, he tells us to get in a boat and do some Cool, sick stunts. There we go. Jump the golf course, buzz the tower. Why is a van on the golf course? I mean, sometimes you never brought your rumpo to the uh, to the no, golf course. No, drive it around. <laughs> <laughs> Not really uh, something I make a habit of. Oh, we can go do that. Sure. So, nonetheless, uh, this is a pretty easy peasy mission. The only thing that can really go wrong is if I flip the boat somehow which has never happened to me ever in Yeah, that would never happen. That's never happened Super to me. Super unlikely. It has happened to me. Um, but it won't happen to me now. See? We're good. Right. No problem. In fact, we can even read a donation, because nothing bad is going to happen at all. Nothing bad possibly could happen at all. I think you're going to like this one. We have $500 from an eternal enigma. What is <laughs> wrong with you, dog? Where? I just saw him. He's impossible <laughs> to miss. <laughs> You've distracted me. I've just driven into a pier. Oh, now it's going to happen. Anyway, <laughs> Enigma says, ever since I first saw you at HEDQ 2017, I knew I wanted to be your friend. And you've been nothing short of amazing this entire time. I love you and Brosa forever, and I will always be behind you for whatever is next for you. And that, my friend, is definitive. I've got the heart and heart of a Woo. criminal, okay? You cannot pierce me with sentimental words. Thank you, though. Thank you for your $500 and for your very kind words, Mr. Enigma. It's been an honor and a pleasure to work with you every time. And we will be working together again in just a few hours. He's, he's been gracious enough to have me on the Silent Hill for the room couch. So if you like this run and you like what I have to bring to the table, you're going to love what Enigma and I and our, our fellow commentators have to bring That's to the table. It's going to be a great run. Can't wait yes, for that. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Please uh, get another one in if you can. We have $25 from Dio. You definitively thought you were getting a donation, but it was definitively me, Dio! Fru, do you know JoJo's? <laughs> if you have to ask, <laughs> the answer's no. But I appreciate, I appreciate the meme. All, All right. right, good. Memes are good. So anyway, we've proven our worth to Rico here. That's Rico. Watch, watch, him, watch his moves here. He could just turn. Sick, dude. Insane. Actually sick. Always facing due south, you know? So anyway, 
I gotta make sure I don't fall in the water here. That would be embarrassing. That would <laughs> be funny. Should I do it? No. Good. All right, awesome. That, I've done that before. I've totally done that before. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Clapping for turning 180 degrees. That's, the bar <laughs> is down here. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is um, take a phone call from Auntie Poulet, who we have not met yet. Uh, we actually get to, to, to play both sides of this exchange here between uh, Umberto's gang and Auntie Poulet's gang. So now she wants us to work for her, which, sure, we should, we're going we're gonna to change outfit, you know. Probably sweating a little bit in the, uh, in the gang clothes. We're going to wear the, uh, the pajamas. Anyway, this is definitive right yeah, here. Yeah, this is important. This is one of my favorite things. Okay, so it's faster in this game to, to get rid of the door on your vehicle. And here you can get rid of the driver's side door by grinding the passenger <laughs> side. How that happens... I don't know, but it's good. It's a good, it's a good gag. That's I definitive. appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. dude. So, uh, Auntie Poulet's missions, we're going to do all of them now. We're going to pull up and uh, announce our presence here. I don't want to answer the phone. Thank you. This is Auntie Poulet. Hello. 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 Ray Liotta for you right yeah. there. You know, Academy, in some of the greatest films ever. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> We miss them dearly. Um, so Juju Scramble is, this is kind of where it gets a little crazy. Um, so we're going to just drive up to the roof, and our objective here, uh, the mission objective, hold on, hold on. Okay. The mission objective is to grab three briefcases. Each time we grab a, gr a briefcase, the uh, police presence gets increasingly obnoxious. Um, so we got to make this quick, but also we have to find a four-door police vehicle. Uh, the reasons for that will be made apparent later. That's a two-door police vehicle, so I can't take it. I need a four-door police vehicle, so I'm looking for not that, that. That's what I'm looking for. Where are you going? I'm over here. Please get out. <laughs> Sorry, fam. It's not personal. Oh, hold on. We got a friend, dude. Look, we got the cop in here. <laughs> What's up, dude? Hey! <laughs> Frozen with fear. He saw what I did to his partner. He's like, nope. Mm-mm. All, right, all right. So you, know. you should leave us alone. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay. So... <laughs> Yo, you remember the GDQ cops? Well... That's the... Uh, they came yeah. back. That's also one of the vehicles I could have taken, but okay. There we go. Like I said, uh, obnoxious, I think, is the word I used, and that would be appropriate here. So uh, that actually went pretty well. Yeah, no. <laughs> I would call that good. Oh, no, great. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> if you remember at the start of the run, I said that I'm going to use a controller for about 10 seconds in the run, and that's coming up here for Bombs Away. Auntie Poulet, there's literally something in her tea that makes us work for her. That's, that's the lore here. Um, so we're going to take our police vehicle here. And we're just going to go down, and uh, we got another RC vehicle mission. This is actually, this one is the bane of my existence. If this goes well, I'm going to be very pleased with myself. I'm so excited for this. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> so I'm going to use the controller now to fly the RC plane, but only to a certain point. Because I've actually screwed up my control scheme when I first started playing this game. I bound the, like... I bound, there's two sets of flying controls, and I bound both of them to the same set of inputs. So I get like double the input. So now I'm going to drop my controller. <laughs> he wasn't kidding. It thudded on the stage. <laughs> it thud on the floor. And I'm going to very carefully, hopefully, uh, take out every everyone with the, oh, I'm not dropping bombs because I drop bombs with Q now instead yeah. of R, I guess. That was my mistake here. I was not, my inputs were not correct. Dude, I need my controller, man. <laughs> All right. We're back. Uh, I didn't need my controller, actually. Yeah. It turns out that was a mistake. We're good. We're picking it up. We're picking, we're literally picking things up. All right. So anyway, Where's these guys, oh my God, he's all the way down there. Yeah, Let's read some donations to hide my shame, please. <laughs> oh boy. We have a $5 donation from Grass Sama. Whoa, 
we're halfway there. Whoa, praying for a Fred Bear. And that was, of course, for our bonus game, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, where we are indeed over halfway there, praying for a Fred Bear. So make sure when you get your donations in, you add that incentive to your donation so you can get us that bonus game. We also have a $100 anonymous donation, which has a haiku. KZ Fru and Blue, definitive Miami. Aesthetic, chef's kiss. Thank you, chef's kiss indeed. That was probably the worst I've done in a while, but it was funny, so I don't really care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're having a good time here. So, okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is, uh, this is the last Auntie Poulet mission. First, we're gonna be blocked by the phone. When the phone rings, you can't pick up missions. So you gotta stop the phone from ringing. And the way I do that is to just uh, fake out entering a car, just like go to enter a car and then stop. That's the thing you do to uh, prevent phone, call, phone calls from bothering you. All right, so we're gonna pull up here, park right around here. There's a, uh, there's a proper gang war happening here and we're gonna put our thumb on the scale uh, from a distance here. Uh, everybody with an arrow over their ham head is uh, condemned. Unfortunately, uh, you have committed the crime of being marked by the game here. So we're gonna use the M60 for the van. I don't know where the Kruger is on my weapon wheel. OG does not have a weapon wheel, but uh, I try to, you know, I try to keep up with the time, so I use the weapon wheel a little bit. It is kind of handy, because the, uh, the, the weapon order in your inventory is a little different, so the radial uh, control does help a lot there. All right, everybody's gone. Now it gets interesting. Now we break the game a little bit here. So I needed a four-door police vehicle earlier, and uh, this is where that's gonna come into handy. The first thing that's important is the vigilante. Uh, so that's why I need the police vehicle. When you're in a police vehicle, you have this toggle submission that you can do, which is basically a switch where you can tell the game you're on a mission and then you can press it again to be off a mission. And that's very handy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is auto save by canceling it. And then I'm gonna line up this very precise and I wanna get out, equip my M60, get in. Perfect, nice. that's very good. Very good. Very good first try. So what happened there was I started the rampage and as the rampage, right before the window of picking up the rampage icon and the rampage starting, um, I was able to sneak in the vigilante submission. And then I could cancel the vigilante submission. So now I have this timer on the side that's go, well, I don't want this thing, man. <laughs> I don't want that. I wanted this. Okay, I need a four-door car, man. And I need a good one, not that thing. Sorry, bro. I stole his car, I psyched him out. It was a prank. Um, so these guys, their heads are sticking out the back. This gotta hurt. So we're just gonna cruise now to, uh, to do some, uh, woo! All right, no problem, no problem. Everyone okay back there? <laughs> you still okay back there? All right. Anyway, this thing is smoking, but that's okay. I don't need it for much longer. So we're just going to cruise up to, uh, to this first mission here for Umberto. I guess the second one, really. The first one where we've been initiated, right? Um, this is our friend. That's our friend. We have to take very good care of him. Treat him like a friend. Yep. All right. Sorry, bro. Um, he has to go because... All right, listen. Let me make my case, okay? <laughs> His, his voice lines take a while, and if he's not alive, everything goes faster. So you're, you're killing your friend because you don't want to listen to him. <laughs> when you, well, when you put it that way, <laughs> it sounds awful. So he's supposed to be here, but actually, you're, you're going to be able to see him here, I think. There he is right there. Yeah. He's, still <laughs> he's fine. He's having a nap, you know? Sometimes you just want to bathe in some ketchup. Yeah. I get it. Fell on know? a deep dish. <laughs> Fell on a deep dish. <laughs> All right, so anyway... Uh, we have to um, progress this gang war. Again, everybody with an arrow is condemned. Uh, but I've got some extra friends here, which is like another definitive exclusive, is the bonus dudes. Usually you don't get bonus dudes, but here you get bonus dudes, and I don't know why. Um, so we have to steal this van. Let's just get in. And uh, if I get any amount of flats, that's normal. Yeah, that's normal. That's pretty normal. That's pretty normal. 
I got like two or three. That's pretty normal. Here comes the ambulance. We're gonna we're gonna go this oh, way. Oh, more flats. I think they're all flat. Actually, yeah. are they all oops, flat? Oops, all flats. <laughs> Do we have oops all? No, we got one. One's made it. All right. This <laughs> usually happens. Uh, the cops will also try and harass me as I skid around <laughs> Vice City. Um, Who I among go us this way. I hasn't go driven this way. with at least three flats? It happens to me literally every day. So um, I'm gonna have to make a bit of a detour. There's an invisible wall here I gotta be careful of because <laughs> it's definitive. It's definitively invisible. I'm gonna pick up this rampage icon. I can do that because I failed that rampage during this mission. So the game's like, all right, you're in free roam mode now because you failed something, right? Well, that's not really the case, right? We, we kind of broke out of that intended sequencing earlier. Yeah! Yes. Three flats, here we go. We're not stopping. Sometimes you just gotta charge head on. <laughs> I missed it! <laughs> Look at how much space there is! You could fit two of these in here. There's the cops, man. <laughs> Brother! It's good, it's Slowly good. Slowly back away. <laughs> no, nothing to see here, officer. No, nope, nothing to see, <laughs> nothing to see. All right. Uh, there's that van from earlier. This might actually come in handy. I'm not, I'm not that even That was a kidding. strat, that wasn't a joke. That was, that was actually a joke. <laughs> It wasn't a joke. I'm trying it's to help accident. you. Tom is going to order a coffee. Okay, no. Una cafe. Um, all right. Let's just take this. You don't want the What's three flats? What's going on, dog? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> all right. Vice City's having a normal one. What's going on? I'm still hearing things. So anyway, uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to go and get on a boat again uh, with another gang member of uh, Umberto's, every time we do a job with some of his, some of his, I don't know, soldiers, mm -hmm. they meet a grizzly end. It's no good. Uh, but, you know, anyway. <clears throat> Things are going to change now. This guy is also my friend, but for him, we're good. We're good. It's fine. It's fine. I was going to punch him, yeah, but he like fell off the dock, <laughs> dude. Instead, I fell. Instead, karma happened. Yeah, right? It turns out it does come back to haunt you after a while. So my rampage is about to end, but before that happens, I'm going to use the weapon given to me by the rampage uh, to just blow up some boats here. Uh, now I don't have it anymore. That's okay. We'll use the shotgun a bit here. And we'll use the uh, Kruger. Okay, we're good. This mission is, is actually quite scary. So I'm going to focus in just a little bit. Okay. Uh, the outline helping very, very greatly here. I'm going to really take my time with this because if if it's going to go bad, it goes bad here. I know where everybody is. I want to make sure this guy is taken care of because he's got a shotgun. I'm going to take care of that guy for safety. And now we're going to pick up the last of our briefcases here. This is unbelievable. Owned. Destroyed. Um, so we're going to leave now. <laughs> And uh, we're going to pick up our last rampage here. Uh, we're basically chaining these together, right? Because it's going to culminate in kind of a surprise ending here. Uh, based on, you know, how you're supposed to progress to the game, through the game, rather, how you're supposed to progress through the game, wow. they shot my tire out in midair. That's pretty good. You can't even be mad. Okay. But... um. Based on where we're at in the story progression, we're nowhere near the end. We're not even close. But you'll notice we're eating a little, you know, the time is climbing up. What am I doing here? Yeah, what's going to happen? What is going to happen? How am I just going to pull it out at the end? Well, it's going to look a little strange. But it is very interesting from a, just from a running perspective because this is so different than kind of your standard classic OG GTA speedrun. So... We're going to be using this rampage here to uh, achieve that end, to get to the end. They just pushed my car away. They're like, yeah. if we can't get home, we'll get his car. It's impounded now. Yeah, it is. All right, so Trojan Voodoo is the mission that we have been trying to get to this entire time. We've wanted to get to this mission because this mission is the key that unlocks the end of the game. So I'm going to do a, a very precise sequence of things that look strange and confusing, and how could that progress to the end of the game at all? And I'll do my best to explain it. Uh, the first thing I need to do 
that I actually truly legitimately need to do is I need to get rid of my driver's side door. So to do that, I've got a few walls that are pretty good for that. This one, namely. There we nice. go. Very good. That's that's. It's a little difficult to do that in this one, to be honest. It's not like the Comet where you shave the wrong side of the car. And it, <laughs> it's not like that. doesn't have that feature. No, not this one. Not this long, boy. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get to a certain point in this mission here. And that's going to be shortly after this cutscene. The Rampage is about to expire. After the Rampage expires, you know I've been whining about the phone ringing the whole time? This is the one time I want my phone to ring is when I leave this vehicle. So, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna park into this pink glow that we're about to see. I'm gonna wait for a guy to talk, and then when that happens, I'm gonna get out of the car, and the phone is gonna ring. Hopefully, it really should. So, I need to focus here. Okay, we got it. Yep, the phone rang. We're gonna leave him here. Um, and now, so what's happened is when the phone rang, it kind of locked the mission in place on that dialogue line. I did it a little late, but I think it's going to be okay. Um, it kind of locked it in place. So we're stuck at this exact specific spot in the mission script right now. And what happens here is if we were to go up here and buy this property at the top of this roof, I got to make sure I don't unsoft lock myself by getting out and canceling the phone call as quick as I can. I'm going to buy this property. You're not supposed to be able to buy properties on missions, but I can do that because of the Rampage thing. And because I bought that property while that phone, while that uh, dialogue line was playing in the mission, that actually passes the second to last mission in the game. So now we're at the end, just out of nowhere. I told you it was going to be strange and weird and random, and that's how we get to the end of this game in Definitive Edition. So now I'm just going to go straight to the end. Yeah, because just do the last mission. We just do the last mission. We actually did. So that sequence of events passed the penultimate mission. One last spin for good measure, dude. One last yeah. one of those. <laughs> so long, Definitive. In the grass. So what we're going to do now, I know it worked, by the way, because the game didn't crash. <laughs> if you <laughs> screw it up, the game crashes. And then, I don't know, they would. I would go through the trap door and leave. But uh, we're all good here. So... We're going to climb over this wall. The last mission takes place inside this mansion. We can't get inside yeah. the mansion because the door is don't, shut. Don't do that mission. But you can't do fastest yeah. boat. Not that one. We want to do the one in here, but we can clip through the wall like that. We just run into it. And here we are. This is the last mission last of the mission. game. This is the last mission. Here we are. Here we are. Keep your friends close. Keep your missions definitive. That's right. That's right. All right. So... Um, <clears throat> An interesting little fact about this mission is that, so the mansion doors were closed, right? I had to clip through the wall to get into the mansion because the doors were shut. If you were to start this mission while the game sees that the mansion doors are closed, it just deletes the mansion doors. That's kind of a fail safe that you're never supposed to encounter at all normally. But it's the one, like, this is the one instance when that happens. So because the mansion doors have been deleted, this is actually the one instance where this mission works as intended. <laughs> because I guess testers didn't know that there were supposed to be more dudes funneling in through the door at the end of the mission. And you'll see that. I'll point it out to you. But um, normally, the mansion doors would exist, but they would be open. And when they're, they exist and they're open, sometimes dudes just get stuck on the doors and they bash their heads into them over and over and over again and they never make it inside the mansion. This is Lance. He betrayed us. For no reason I, at all, really. Like, I don't even know why. I can't really explain all of the actual <laughs> story to you because we spent really no time doing it, but Lance betrays you. If you want to see more of the story, you can watch some of the, uh, some of the classic runs that we've done here on GDQ. I just hate the shotgun. I keep pulling it out. What's my weapon of choice here? How do I, how do I kill my friend? Uh, I mean, there's an invisible barrier here, and that's yeah. probably not helping. No. All right, we there got him. Go. <laughs> so there was an invisible wall that I had to basically stand just an inch away from so I could shoot through it. Um, all right. Now we just have to wait for Sonny to spawn. But I'm going to show off a little bit of a little bit of an interesting thing. We got we got some. Uh, Let's get a gift here. for Sonny. Let's get a gift for Sonny. I think Sonny could use a new car. So we're going to go outside our mansion. 
which is broken, by the way. Our mansion's broken. <laughs> um, it's not supposed. It's not even our mansion. It's still supposed to be Diaz's. We're gonna take our car, and I think I think Sonny, the big bad here. I think this jerk can use a car straight to the face. What do you think? Oh, sounds good to me. All right, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do just that. Here's some more dudes here, right? These dudes that are aiming the gun at you, they get stuck on the doors that don't exist right now. So anyway, we're gonna gift a car to Sonny. There you go. Oh. And we're gonna ride off into the sunset. <laughs> and time. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to thank my co-commentator, PMC Trilogy, for being here, uh, for being a brother to me, and for um, not saying anything about me introducing him for 15 minutes. Thank you. <laughs> I love to be there for you, always. Um, yes, please follow his stream. Uh, you want to give your elevator pitch? Oh, I mean, I, I like to play all sorts of Chaos games. I like to ask what could possibly go wrong. That's the best thing to do. Another thing that I think really warrants mentioning is um, PMC, uh, at this point, it's on a hiatus, perhaps indefinite. But uh, you used to run a podcast where you would interview um, interview other speedrunners called Overboost. So if you want to get a little peek behind the scenes on some of the people you might see here, or elsewhere in the community, please check out Overboost wherever you get your podcast, right? Yes, that's correct. Yep. Thank you. Like I said, that's that's a project that's on hiatus, but it's still a lot of value uh, to be had there. Um, for me, you can follow me if you want, but this is probably the end of my speed running road, if I'm honest, for the time being. Um, I, I'm going to pause for here. Um, just give a little bit of a light spiel. I've, uh, I've been very gracious and very honored to have been a part of something that's been so cool for many, many years. This is my seventh run at GDQ, and that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, Tremendous. You know, the, the last one is probably the most important, if not more important, than the first one. So um, to be able to marry, you know, uh, community uplifting and community gathering, GDQ is so important to so many of us, to marry that with a good cause that impacts the world in a way that's perhaps more important now than ever is a very, very beautiful thing. It's, 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 um, it's, it's been the honor of my life to have been a part of this for as many years as I have. I think Enigma said 2017, that was my mm -hmm. first one. And, you know, I think what I would like now is to pass the baton on. I've said enough here. I've done enough. I've done enough runs. We, we've even gotten the remaster done here today. So I'd like to see, what I'd like to see more than anything is just new, fresh, exciting talent to, uh, to take my place here because it's, it's, it's time. I think it's time for me to, to wrap it up. So we're going to do just that. Thank you again to you, of course, and to Musical Daredevil, who was, who was my first host in 2017 and is now my last host. So thank you for helping me complete the circle. It's been an honor, KZ. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. I'm going to go now. Stay tuned. Lots of good stuff to come. Thank you all. Amazing job, KZ Fru. I am so happy we got to show off Definitive Edition for your last run for a while. Good luck on your future endeavors. We have a $1,000 donation from Squishy Flan. It's time for a definitive return to donating at GDQ. Having definitely watched this, I may get this game and definitively get a taste of that sweet hype. Until then, I'm just going to have to bear with getting that bonus game unlocked. And checking in on that bonus game, we have passed $47,000. We have $43,000, but we don't have a lot of time to do that. We only have a couple other things to go before we get to where we need to have that bonus run met. You have maybe another hour and a half. So everyone, chat, crowd, KZ, if you're still back there, please donate and make sure you add Five Nights at Freddy's to your donation so we can get that incentive met in the very limited time we have to do that. In the meantime, we're going to take a quick break. So get to donating. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Summer Games Sung Quick 2022, where we are still in pursuit of our bonus game, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. We have a couple of donations that came in for that. Here is a $10 donation from Desi Bean. This run is so rad. It looks like it's time to hop on the definitive $5 train for that bonus incentive. Here's two tickets. Yes, you heard Desi Bean chat. Let's get a $5 donation train for that bonus game going. And in the meantime, here is a word from a couple of our sponsors. We're called Neons. Sinners plucked from hell to do God's dirty work. But I'm finding it hard to believe we're in heaven. All right, we have a $20 donation from Pseudo Fork Bomb. Hey, let's get that Five Nights at Freddy's funded so we can squeeze in as many jump scares as we can. That hay was supposed to be a jump scare. We have still just a little bit over $47,000 raised. We have $43,000 to go. So again, not much time left. Please get your donations in to get that bonus run added to the schedule. In the meantime, that is actually going to do it for me at the hosting desk for this evening. I will be back here tomorrow evening at around this same time for a couple of other hype runs. And so after this upcoming interview, you will be hearing from our very next host. And for now, as I just said, I am actually going to be throwing it over to the interview area with Kizaron, Enigma, and Shark Hat to talk about some horror games. Take it away. What is up? Summer Games Done Quick 2022. I'm Keyzeron, and I'm joined by two lovely people. We have Shark Hat 87 <laughs> and an Eternal Enigma. Hello. I'm just going to call you what? Shark, and I'm just going to call you Jacket. That will be I mean, totally fine with me. <laughs> fantastic. So I've talked to you both before. I don't need to get into your origins. But what I do want to get into is why horror games? Let's just start down and work towards me. Well. With horror games, I tend to, back in the back in my 20s, I'm 37 now, back in my 20s, uh, we would hang out, me and my friends would just hang out on the couch at my place, and we would play games like Silent Hill and Resident Evil, and there would be some people who just wouldn't want to play them, but they would enjoy watching people play them. It was sort of like Twitch in real life, and it kind of got me prepared, and once I started streaming on Justin TV back in, 2000, back in 2011, which became Twitch, it became something where I thought I could translate that into a digital thing where instead of people on a couch with me, they'd be in a chat room. And uh, that was what really got me into it. It's just the horror, the horror games just, just attracted me. It was just that thing. Yeah, for me, horror games have always just been some of my favorite games to play in general, casually. And I think that just translates over to speedrunning as well, because a lot of times you just want to pick games that you already like to play anyway. So I, part of it's just a coincidence, honestly. It's, it's, oh, I want to pick up a new game. Well, what's a game I like? Oh, well, I've already done Dead Space. Well, Outlast or, you know, whatever else, Resident Evil, you know, and uh, that's just kind of how it happened for me. Now, not to detract, because everyone at home should absolutely watch these two runs, but I have 30 minutes. Which one should I watch and why? G give me your best selling point. Let's start with Shark. Well. The cool thing about the, the Outlast run is, especially this category, is it gives you the option to see so much more of the game than you do in other runs, because you can just skip to the end of the game in 13 seconds, normally. But here, you get to see a, like a huge variety of tech, lots of out of bounds, cool door glitches, shrinking your hitbox, all these, all these crazy things, and going to the level backwards. And uh, it's just a good time. 
Okay, you got my palette wet. You got my palette wet. You got some, you got some competition here. So with Silent Hill 4, it tends to be two games in one. It's an hour long, and the beginning you're just by yourself, but in the halfway through, you pick up an escort, Eileen. It, it, it turns into an escort quest, so it becomes a game of making sure she goes fast and not necessarily you, so it's kind of two games in one. And it is a game full of complete randomness. You don't really know what's going to happen. And I, I, I tend to be sort of the entertainer type as well, so I, I think it's good for the audience because you just, not really the same thing happens in every single run. There's just a, a potential for complete chaos in every run. So it's sort of like two games in one, and there's so much randomness that can occur. It's just, it's just different every time. Okay, that didn't help me make up my mind at all. You're both terrible. <laughs> anyway, um, so there's a lot of like intertwining communities between the horror game runners. Like, it doesn't feel like it's just like a separate game. Like, you know, like you'll have the Spyro crew or you'll have like the Mario crew, but it just seems like a lot of the horror game runners are like this tight knit community and like you two are already friends as is. So like, absolutely. What, yeah. What do you think like kind of contributes to that? Like what, what makes the horror game community so tight knit? We'll just, we'll start with Jacket. It's, it's interesting to say, and I don't know if there's a clear answer to it. It's just, we've all come together as the people that play the scary games, but one of the most common refrains that we hear from people that watch our streams is, horror games are ironically the most comfortable and cozy games to watch because they don't have to play it and we can sort of guide them through it. And all of us tend to be cut from the same cloth, so to speak. So I think if you watch one of us, you get a good sense of what we're all about. And everybody, you know, tends to be of the, of the same ilk. And I think it's just sort of a, sort of a comfort with familiarity, so to speak. Yeah, I think one thing for sure definitely too is that with, uh, it's, it's just so opposite to the way that you would normally play horror games as opposed to a lot of other games you're also going very fast. You know, a lot of, like, a lot of these games you're supposed to be hiding from enemies and going really slow and being scared. So it's always kind of interesting to then see, okay, well, what would the game look like if you just ran through it as fast as possible and it almost not, not removes the horror, but it, it sort of reveals more things about the game you wouldn't have seen before. And I think a lot of people that play or watch horror speedruns enjoy that, that part of it too. Now I'm going to throw it to a social media question that we did get from at Pagan Zero, and this is directed at the both of you. So at, there you go. Same question for both runners. I can read. Any parts of the run that could potentially be problematic, and is there any preparations that could be taken to minimize any risk from those parts? And you know, I really like this question because it kind of just speaks to marathon preparation. So we'll start with Shark. Sure. So uh, there's, it, it's funny, we have this, uh, this, this drawing of Traeger here from, uh, from, from Outlast. So in his area, there's an out of bounds that we do, what, that we can go for. And if you don't do it fast enough, it's not a big deal. You just can't go for it because it's, it's, it's a bit on a timer. The thing is, uh, if you do get the first part and you mess up the second part, you can actually soft lock and get stuck. And then you have to reload and do a whole long trick to get back there. It takes a minute or two to get back. So it's one of those things where I'm probably going to go for it once. If I soft lock, I probably won't go for it again. <laughs> but I just got to be a bit careful. Uh, and, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, but I think it'll be okay. <laughs> it's great that Shark referenced this, this wonderful drawing over here because next to the doctor is a twin victim. And there is a room in Silent Hill 4 where there are six of those things. And they start bolting towards you once it is time and you get close. I was once on a GDQ hotfix, speedruns from the crypt, hosted by Ecdysis. And I- Wonderful human. I died, absolutely. I yeah. died in that room. It was the first time that had ever happened in a marathon setting and sort of put the fear of God in me, so to speak. <laughs> so that is the room where in the last week or so, both on my stream practice and off stream practice, I have really been focusing because that is the one room that could possibly create the most problems and in order to mitigate I would have to have an extra melee weapon to get the enemies off of Eileen who is the woman that we're taking around in the game and that twin what I what we what I just call the twin victim hallway where six of those things are awaiting is definitely that room for me now kind of like rolling off that question a little bit, but changing the direction a tiny bit. So is there any favorite trick or like any favorite segment of the run that you're going to like, I don't know, be, be most excited about on stage for it? Let's start with Enigma. Well, it may not be a trick, but it is just a special part of the run. And I have one of my Twitch emotes dedicated to it. There is a room 
in the hospital, which is the mid part of the game. There are 22 rooms in this hallway. They are randomized every single time. There is no manipulation. There is no pattern. There is no nothing to figure out what you're going to get here. The, the video game version of a box of chocolates. We have to find <laughs> the room that Eileen is locked in. We have to find a key. And in my opinion, even though that room can drive you up a wall sometimes when you're speed running for top times, which I do on Silent Hill 4, it's still pretty entertaining for everybody. And I love getting everybody hyped up because on some alternate universe, my mom always told people that when I was growing up, I told people I wanted to be a game show host. So I can go in there and be like, is it an L1? Is it an R1? And really <laughs> kind of get people involved in that. And it's just a lot of fun. Even when it doesn't go right, it's a lot of fun for everybody. So I'm looking forward to doing that one for sure. Yeah, I, I think one of the things I'm looking forward to the most, again, uh, related to, to this character here, his, his whole level, the Mail Ward, is one of the craziest levels in the whole run. It's, got, it's, it's so dense with collectibles and uh, really difficult tricks. And so the thing before the trick I was talking about, we actually do a very long um, extended skip that skips a whole four-minute cutscene with him normally. But it's just really crazy because uh, we'll, we'll talk about it more in the run itself, but... There's a lot of uh, glitches with shrinking your hitbox, and you, you, you get it so small that you fit through this like absolutely tiny gap, but you have to get the hitbox way earlier, so you have to go all the way up all these stairs, dodge a bunch of obstacles without losing it, and it's, a, it's just kind of a whole crazy thing. And if you mess it up, you have to do the whole thing over again. Um, so it's a pretty exciting part of the run. I got one last question for the both of you, and I got to go back to, to a cutthroat question here, because you're both good friends, but I got to ask it. If you both swapped games, if you are doing Outlast and you are doing Silent Hill, Who's going to do better and why? It's got to yeah. be. It's, it, by a shark by default, I, don't, I just don't know anything about Outlast. I would have to just say. See, I, I, I've, I've, I've beaten Outlast, or, uh, oh, Outlast, Silent Hill 1 and 2. Um, Silent Hill 4 I, is very different. I, from those that's, that's, from watching it, that's what I've gathered. So I, I don't really know how I would do. Uh, I'd like to think it would be OK. You know, I don't, <laughs> it seems like it'd be fun, though. I think it would be. That'd be a good idea for another little sideshow to get people to yeah. trade runs and see how quick they can get there. That's pretty yeah, interesting. That is, that is a good idea. Yeah. You're giving away, like, potential hotfix secrets here. Hey, I yeah. don't oh, know anything. Oh, I'm oh just, you asked the question. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, we're not, yeah. okay. <laughs> I'm just answering the question. I don't know anything. <laughs> well, thank you two very much for coming up here. Thank you. I'm excited you. to watch both runs. Reminder, folks, we have Shark doing Outlast, and we have, I'm, I just got to call you Jacket. That jacket's That's fine. We have, we have Enigma with Silent Hill. That's coming up really soon. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I've been Keys Run, and I believe I'm throwing it over to someone. Enigma. It's oh coming for your run. Goodness. There's now a seventh one over here. <laughs> yeah, they, they just keep popping out of the woodwork. I, I can't escape them. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Scent, and I'm here to tell you about some of the amazing prizes that you can all win by donating. Prizes like this absolutely lovely Silent Hill 4 Twin Victim Perler. Lovely. It's talked terrifying. About it early. Come on. Look at how cute this thing is. Don't, don't you just want to, like, give it a little head pat? I want to run. <laughs> You can't run, Keys. Uh, you live here. That's true. This is your fate. Oh, no. Uh, huge shout-outs to Silent Evil for uh, sending it out to us. Do you mind uh, holding that bad boy for us? No one better. Uh, now, as a reminder, all the prizes I'm going to be talking about right now are available from now until the end of Omori, a little bit later tonight, kind of the end of this horror block that we've got going. And right now, we are working to try and get a bonus game into the marathon. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, we are about $52,000 uh, towards our $90,000 goal, goal to make that happen. So let's get some donations in during Phasmophobia, and let's get them in for uh, that Five Nights at Freddy's bonus game. But let's look at some of the prizes that you could uh, get entered into win while you get those donations in. So for a $5 minimum donation, we have a pair of lovely pins from our friends over at Fan Gamer. Uh, you can take a look at them right uh, there below. Uh, so, somewhere, well, one of the sides of your screen. There you go. We got uh, Robbie the Rabbit and The Door from Silent Hill 4, The Room. Uh, Enigma, I'm not familiar with Silent Hill 4, but I presume this is The Room. It is The Room. It is The Room you wake up in. And you just can't get out. You just can't leave. Now, just can't leave. you definitely can't. I've heard this pin actually has real chains on it. Yes, it huh. does. I actually, I own that. One, oh. of, one of my great viewers got that for me a while back, and it does have real chains on it. It's super cool. Thank you so much to Fangamer and Konami for sending it out to us. $5 minimum donation for it. Now, speaking of Robbie the Rabbit, we also have this, you know, perfectly adorable Robbie the Rabbit plush. It's, it's great. It's completely washable, and it even comes with a little set of, uh, of markers. So, you know... You can just make sure that Robbie has a 
has a nice, nice, big old smile. Nothing, nothing friendlier than a bunny with a big old smile, right? Correct. Yeah, come on. How can you not love Robbie? $10 minimum donation, again, comes with a set of washable markers and is fully washable himself. Uh, speaking of, you know, fun horror-themed prizes here from our friend Geekish Gifts, we have this lovely Game Over tote bag. Would you like to continue? I would. I'd like to continue with this marathon. And all of you would like to continue with this marathon by seeing Five Nights at Freddy's. So get those donations in. $15 minimum donation for this lovely handmade tote bag. Thank you so much to our friends over at Geekish Gifts for sending it out to us. Now, from Paper Meals, we have uh, this absolutely adorable Vibin Nabstabluk from, you know, Undertale, Delta Rune, whatever you like. It's just Vibin. Like, I feel this is me watching horror speedruns right here. You think it's scary, but nah. It's just Vibin. Just listen to some cool people, play some cool speed games. $10 minimum donation, I believe. And thank you so much to Paper Meals for sending that out to us. Now, I got one more prize to talk about, Enigma. Yes. It is the most horror game prize available in this entire block, and I think you are going to instantly understand why. Okay. Because scarier than, uh, you know, this lovely bunny mascot, scarier than that twin victim Perler, we have... A oh, Pond. my goodness. You, you got to understand, as, as a... You know, as a, a Silent Hill runner, you got to understand, we have the Star Rod from Kirby here because the only thing... My <laughs> gosh! The, the best part of Silent Hill runs is, of course, the part where you become a magical girl. That is absolutely it. Uh, this is an absolutely amazing replica of the Star Rod from Kirby. It comes with its own little beautiful stand here. It'll stand up oh, that's right very, here on the floor next to very, Enigma's feet. That's very close. Comes very to us... Uh, from Flux Tide Designs, it is absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for sending it out to us. It's a uh, $25 minimum donation. Thank you so much. I mean, it, it looks just absolutely beautiful. I'm going to hold it up again here for the camera because it's just a little too low to be seen. There you go. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. And again, $25 is going to get you entered into everything I just talked about. And it's going to get you, you know, an eighth of the way into our grand prize, which is a lovely pair of replicas from our friends over at Heroic Replicas. You have, of course, the amazing Falchion from Fire Emblem, you know, the legendary sort of Marth, Krom, Lucina, in all of its glory, as well as Sly Cooper's Cane, a replica of that. We saw the run earlier of uh, episode one of Sly 2, which was really cool. I've actually never seen a Sly 2 speedrun before. Uh, it's always Sly 1. It was really cool seeing something different. You could take home both of those lovely replicas for $200 cumulatively throughout the event. So get in a $25 donation before Omori, but ideally as soon as you can, and make sure you put that donation towards that bonus game we were talking about earlier, Five Nights at Freddy's. And remember, you can always head over to gamesdonequick.com because it's going to let you see all of the amazing speedruns that we have coming up in the marathon, all of the amazing prizes that you can donate in order to be eligible to win, and of course, all of the amazing incentives that you can put your donations towards. Uh, Keys, I think that's really all I got. Thanks for having me as always. And uh, you, you ready for Phasmophobia? You ready for Brosentia? Oh, I'm, I'm absolutely pumped for Phasmophobia. Yeah. Wait, that's it? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, there, you. There we that, go. That was Come your on. Cue. Make we, some noise for the audience. We have a crowd. We got the audience. We got to use them, Keith. Yeah. Keep making that noise. And everyone at home, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back, everyone, to Summer Games Done Quick 2022. I am Nicole Goodnight, and I will be your host for the upcoming Phasmophobia Run. <laughs> it's so good to see you all in person again. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. As a reminder, we are at 52,748.30 out of 90,000 needed for Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, Twitch Chat, and Crowd. My birthday is tomorrow, and it would mean the world to me if we got this incentive met. So if you want to donate, make sure you select that during your donation so we can get some more GDQ. More GDQ, more speedruns. Let's go. We have a $10,000 donation from the Yeti. <laughs> they say, hey, all Yeti here. We want to awaken all the demons and ghouls for Brosentia, NPC, Flannel Cat, and Peace Eggs Phasmophobia Run. Here are 10,000 ghoul bucks to make sure things get extra spooky. Massive shout out to Kinetic Games for both making this amazing game and for working us to bring the official Phasmophobia tea to our collection. 
$5 from every shirt sold is donated directly to MSF. Good luck to the runners and viewers at home. Lights off, volume up. We be getting spooky in here. Thank you so much, the Yeti, that is amazing. We have a $25 donation from Nancy who says, so excited for the horror block. Love you, SGDQ. Thank you so, so much for your donation. I have a $15 donation from that one, Chelsea. Five nights for only 40K more. What a deal. What a deal indeed. Let's get that met so we can have more GDQ. I have $5 from Mr. Fenord. No incentive left unmet. Thank you so much for your donation. And as a reminder, all donations are benefiting Doctors Without Borders. Doctors Without Borders, or MSF, is an international medical humanitarian aid organization providing life-saving medical humanitarian care in over 70 countries around the world. MSF is committed to independence, impartiality, and neutrality. These principles are what make it possible for MSF to respond rapidly to emergencies and provide life-saving medical care in situations where many other organizations can't or won't. 90% of MSF staff is national, meaning they live locally and are from the country where they work. I have a $50 donation from Zoen that says, let's get that FNAF run. Thank you so much for your donation. We are only $36,457 away from that. I believe we can make that happen tonight. Let's go. I have a $100 anonymous donation. Thank you so much for your donation. I have $250 from Plato 2876. More GDQ? Let's go, chat. I agree, let's get more GDQ. It has been amazing so far. We have already raised $243,628 and we are only on day two. You all are amazing. We could not do this without you. Thank you so, so much. I have a $50 anonymous donation. Let's get some more spooky times into the marathon. I agree, spooky times are the best times. Thank you so much for that donation. I have a $25 donation from Mithra was taken. So glad to be hearing my favorite Nicole Goodnight commentating for speedrunning Phasmophobia, a game that carries a lot of weight and brought me to know her. It's been a long journey with learning to play without sight, game archival and preservation, and finding out specifics before they were published of Phasmophobia. All while getting to know the absolutely lovely Nicole. Oh, Mithra, you're so sweet. Wishing the absolute best to the whole team. And also, hey chat, did you know it's Nicole's birthday tomorrow? So make sure to wish her a happy birthday by donating for FNAF security breach so you can hear more of her lovely voice. Mithra, you are such a sweetheart. And yes, Phasmophobia is an amazing game that has meant a lot to me personally, and being able to play with a friend who is someone who can't play games typically because they don't have any sight, this has been something that we've been able to play. So it is a very special game to me. I'm so excited to be here tonight, chat. You have no idea. Thank you again, Mithra. You are incredibly sweet. Sorry, my community is adorable. I have a $25 donation from Shriveling Fire. Nicole, good night. The Nicole, good night. Nicole, golden award, good night. Professional golf at speedrunner, Nicole, good night. That Nicole, good night. Nicole, old. That will make sense during the run, I promise, chat. Good night. Anime girl and all around menace to society, Nicole, good night. Nicole, I respect my friend Jerry and his opinions on the parabolic microphone, good night. That Nicole, good night. She's here, she's hosting, she's at GDQ. Cool. 
<laughs> Hi, here's the hosting the FNAF game. Thank you so much, Shriveling Fire. I am so, so excited to be here in person. Oh, it's amazing. You all are fantastic. I have a $5 donation from Anonymous that simply says $5 hype train. Chat, if you play Phasmophobia, or even if you don't, if you want to hop on that hype train and tell me what your favorite ghost is from the game, feel free. I would love to see everybody's favorite. I have a $100 donation from Hofumyama. Never seen it before, but a stuffed bear. How scary can this game be? Oh, you'll see. Thank you so much for that donation. I have a $100 donation from Java Splice that simply says less than three, less than three to you as well. I have a $100 donation from Mr. Creepy Pasta. I heard there are ghosts here tonight. Show me the ghosts. We will show you so many ghosts, Mr. Creepy Pasta. Thank you so much for your donation. I have a $5 donation from Infinity Fire. $5 donation train? Absolutely, thank you so much. I have $25 from Crisis Wolf. Can't wait to watch the Phasmophobia speedrun. Hype for Phasmo's first speedrun in GDQ. Good luck with the run, Phas crew. Don't let that ghost grab you. Thank you so much, Crisis Wolf. I have a $100 donation from Rem. Is this enough to get a ticket into the Pizzaplex? I know it's getting close to closing time. Thank you so much for your donation. It absolutely is. We are inching ever so much closer to that bonus game of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. So keep them coming, Twitch chat. I have a $25 donation from Fair. Here are five tickets to the $5 train. Thank you so, so much. Sanawi donates $200 and says, let's get that FNAF bonus game. But don't forget one rule, keep the lights on. Thank you so much for that donation.